Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the DRF Bets race of the day for Wednesday, May the 22nd, race number six at Delaware Park. Some nice optional claimers going six furlongs. Get involved with a DRF Bets account. If you play $7 to win on any horse in any race of the day this month and your selection finishes second or third, you get your money back. Learn more at promos.drf.com. Let's meet the field for race number six at Delaware on Wednesday. You can access free formulator past performances on the race of the day event page at drf.com. Download them, handicap along with us. We'll take this field in post position order, beginning with the number one Johnny Jump Up. And Matt, this has been a great claim. They took this horse for $16,000 in June of 2018. This horse won 100 grand or last, uh, last fall. Yeah, I mean, look, this this is a he's a racehorse. He's blue collar. He's 11 for 45 lifetime. Like you say, the connections grabbed him in the summer of last year, and he went on to do some good things. Um, I'm going to be interested to see how he runs here and how he's betting here, because to me, seven to two is just a terrible underlay, and it has nothing to do with the horse's credentials and what he's capable of. It has everything to do with the distance. I know he's five for 25 lifetime at three quarters of a mile, but boy, over the past year or two. Most of his best runs have come at a mile and longer, and I just look at the six furlongs and say, I, I don't know if he's still got this kind of gas in the tank. I think he'll drift off that morning line to probably be a playable price. He won that sweat tire on the lead. I thought, and Timeform US disagrees with me, I thought that track was speed favoring, and Johnny Jump Up pulled off a $48 upset that day. The Campbell, I'm not going to fault him. Listen, he was bet down to 7-1 in that race. Again, some nice horses went very, very fast early, 46-3 and three for a mile in an eighth race, and couldn't go with horses like Bonus Points and Monongahela, the latter, who came back to place in the grade three Excelsior with a 93 buyer, and the last race is just to throw it because he threw out the jockey. Yeah, exactly. That's not one that you're supposed to be looking at. Again, it's not so much what he has done on the track I'm concerned about. It's much more about the distance at this point in his career. I'm not sold that six furlongs is what he wants. This is an interesting race because you've got a lot of old timers that need to reclaim their form. And you also have a red hot horse in the number two faction cat. This horse has won three in a row, although two of those races have come on the turf. He ran a big fig on grass two starts back. The question is, is he better on the turf? Yeah, I happen to think he is, but then at the same time, I look and see, ever since Gerald Bennett's got a hold of this horse, he's just turned into a different animal, because like you said, he's rattled off three in a row. He started off, what, 21 starts, 11 times a second place finisher? I mean, he did not like to win races, and now all of a sudden, he's put it together. I, I can't help but notice his overall record on turf being as solid as it is, not that his dirt races are bad. Um, I want him to prove that he's as good on the dirt as he is on the turf. But I do think it is very interesting to note the change in form since Bennett has taken over. 25% winners in 2019. As you mentioned, this horse was 1 for 21 before the trainer switch. Now he's a respectable 4 for 24. Let's see where he's going to be on the time form U.S. pace projector. A little bit far off the pace. We have three horses that can show speed. But time form U.S. still believes this is a blue bar scenario, which will favor horses on or near the earth. Early lead and the number three Colonel Sharp certainly fits the bill. Colonel Sharp's getting some much needed class relief. They ran him in the toboggan, a graded stakes race in New York, and he chased a very sharp horse in Skyler's Scramjet before tiring. In the grade three General George, he chased a very sharp horse in Uncontested before tiring. Now, he finished last in both of those races. It's fair to say maybe Colonel Sharp can't step anymore, but the last race, I like the fact that Hugh McMahon prepped this horse on the turf. He's got good numbers turf to dirt in the past yeah I, I think all th all of these three most recent runs you're supposed to just completely throw out the two races against great stakes company he's just not that good and then the turf race it was nothing more than a means to an end to get him ready for this race here second off the bench back on the main track um, I'm very very interested to see from a pace standpoint where he is because I tend to agree with time form that I don't think there's a confirmed speed in here and Colonel Sharp has at least shown in the past the ability to be forwardly placed um, and look I'm not suggesting he's gonna get back to that Dave's friend from four back but if he does anything close to that, he's going to win this race. Now, perhaps he's slightly more effective on a wet track, but the class drop, I mean, it is huge. Looking at that General George, couple next out winners, and Lockheed, the third place finisher, came back to run third with a 94, then exploded to win a stakes at Laurel with a 108 buyer. If he can remember who he used to be, this horse is a main contender. I think he drops off his morning line price. I've been waiting for the four. It's the journey to come back to form, and it's kind of been about a year and a half now, Matt, since he won the Shaladon going seven furlongs, and I was like, wow, he looked good doing it. Maybe they threw him to the Wolves 
in the Phoenix and he never recovered. He's come back to run a couple of good races. And I guess last time out, facing Lockheed and Lewisfield off a long layoff isn't exactly what the doctor ordered, but he's the kind of horse that got to overcome a slow pace, perhaps if time form US is right, and he's got to show he can still run. I, I think there's still quality here. Like you said, I mean, he's run a number of good races. The problems I have, one, the big one that you alluded to, he hasn't run since September or hasn't won since September of 2017. That's a concern. And then the pace situation, if it isn't going to be as slow as it looks like it might be on paper, his running style, he's going to be way up against it. I picked him second just because I think he's talented. Um, I just think he's going to have some things that he's going to have to overcome. One of the classier horses in this race is the number five, Always Sunshine. We expect him to get a favorable situation up close to the expected moderate pace. He won the grade three Maryland sprint in 2016. He was a multiple stakes winner last year. Form seemed to go sour, but I like that the barn gave him five months off. He's working very quickly for his return. Perhaps, coincidentally, perhaps not. He's a first time gelding now. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what you get off this long layoff. Keep in mind, he was scheduled to run or at least entered in one of the greatest stakes races over the weekend at Pimlico on Preakness Day. So they chose to come to this spot, or at least it seems that way, uh, a much softer position for him to be in. He's done good work at Delaware in the past, one for two with a uh, second place finish as well to go from those two lifetimes. Look, He's another one that I wouldn't be stunned at all. If he came back to one of his best races, he deserves to be one of the favorites in here. Balavor, the number six, again, might have to overcome a tough pace situation up front. And this six for a long distance might be a little bit short of what he wants, but I thought he ran pretty well two starts back. Now, that was the race where Johnny jumped up through the rider at the start, and Balavor, I thought, ended up with a clean trip. But Speed won every single one of those races at Charlestown on March the 29th. And the winner of that race, run into love you came back to win the million dollar charlestown classic last time out he did not run at all but club man is not a bad horse no not at all I, you know he was in a, a decent enough field and he's been facing decent enough horses i guess the concern for me you brought up the obvious one uh, as far as the running style boy it's, it's hard for me to love him coming from basically dead last in a spot like this uh, but if you're playing those sort of exotic wagers why not use use him underneath if you're looking for recency, if you're looking at a horse where you don't want to question where he is from a recent form standpoint, you're going to gravitate to the number seven, Mr. Bricks, who's won two out of his last three races. And in his most recent start, he was beaten by Lockheed, who popped a 108 buyer that day, and Lewisfield, who came back to run third in the graded Maryland Sprint last weekend with a 94 buyer speed figure. Now, they're dropping the source in for $50,000 today, but he certainly fits on his best race. Yeah, absolutely. Highest last out buyer with an 89. Highest last out raw time form rating with a 109. Um, I find it peculiar. I, I'm sure it's just nothing more than bad luck. One for 11 at the distance with six second place finishes. But we have seen, look, go to that run three starts back, six and a half furlongs, two starts back, seven. I suppose maybe there's a chance that this six furlongs is a hair on the sharp side before he gets to his best. But at the same time, based on the form that he's in, you can't not say that he's a he's a major player in here. Completing the field is the eight half back. This horse has done some good work at Delaware Park in the past. He's coming into this race in good form. Last time out, he was stalking in a race that didn't have a lot of pace. He finished an OK second, the third finish came right back to win for 32,000 with a 77 buyer. It's a Gerald Bennett trained horse. And again, we mentioned that uh, Bennett is having a fantastic year. It's just that he's so light on the buyers. He's got to improve. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose I, if if I were involved with the horse, I would say you're on a send mission, try to clear because it doesn't look like there's much speed in here. And I know he's not the fastest out of the gate, but again, I, I think the only way he can win a race like this is to try to be aggressive and go because of what you brought up from a number standpoint. He's just light against these. Let's throw up our top selections for the DRF bets Wednesday race of the day, and we agree. We're hoping that Colonel Sharp's going to get a confidence booster here. He's been in tough. He's maybe been on the wrong surface last time out. He drops. He gets an advantageous pace scenario, according to Time Form US, and we're hoping he can get back to his best form. I don't think we get the 8-1. to one. No, I think the 8-1 to one's a bit of a pipe dream. I think we're probably looking at 3-1, to one, somewhere in that ballpark. The other thing that you want to just keep an eye on, the last two times he has gone second off the layoff, he's had a couple of victories. I think you're looking at a solid move here. You brought up the turf-to-dirt move with Hugh McMahon. Um, again, I don't think we're going to get the price, but I, I think he's one of the main players in here. Give me numbers. 3-4-5-2. 
I'm going to key 3-7 in here in race number six. Mr. Bricks has been in pretty good form, and I want to use him maybe working out an outside stalking trip. It's the DRF Bets Wednesday race of the day. Get involved with a DRF Bets account because there's a money back offer for every race of the day this month on DRF.com. Bet $7 to win on any one horse. If your selection finishes second or third, you get your money back. Learn more promos.drf.com. Approximately post time for the 6th at Delaware on Wednesday, 3.30 Eastern. Good luck.